London, 217.55. London, 215.55. Houston, 214.33. Houston, 211.52. Dublin Marathon, over two hours 20, fell apart. Dublin Marathon, 212.01, place second. World Champs in Doha, over two hours 20, very, very difficult. Tokyo Olympic Games. DNF wasn't prepared for the race. London Marathon, 209.48, brilliant day. Boston Marathon, over two hours 20, didn't prepare for the hills, fell apart. Some marathons go absolutely brilliant. You focus on all the little things, you get the training right, you get the result you deserve. I've had so many marathons not go brilliantly. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's not all brilliant results. Let's discuss 10 marathons and 10 tips to help you in your next marathon and make sure you can learn from some of the mistakes I've made and get you the best result possible on race day. London 2017, 217.55 and I trained here in Flagstaff, Arizona. It was one of my most favorite marathons because there was no pressure. No pressure on me, nobody expected me to do well, I hadn't been running for a while, I just wanted to enjoy the experience. The positive was I embraced everything, the bands, the crowd, I, I didn't get too intense or too serious that I stopped myself from enjoying the experience. The mistake I made was taking a gel on the course that I hadn't practiced in training. Around about mile 20, 21, I thought it'd be a good idea to have a gel. It's a good idea to fuel, but you absolutely must practice the fuel that you're going to use on race day. Things could have got a lot worse. I slowed down by 15 to 20 seconds per mile for two to three mile and then I got back on course. But please practice your fueling strategy. Practice the stuff you're going to use on race day. Look up what does that race have on the course. Practice it. Does it absorb well in your stomach? Is it going to prevent you from running well? If not, use it. But always practice. That was marathon number one. Let's talk about marathon number two. Marathon number two, Dublin Marathon 2018. I'm flying, I'm leading, I feel incredible. Mile 17, mile 18, mile 19, I'm pushing. And guess what happens? I fall apart. I forgot that the marathon is, how much fuel do you have? Imagine a big bag of rice. Every time you stick a knife in that bag of rice, more rice drains from the bag. And it's very difficult to get that rice back. It's impossible. So as I get to 19, mile 20, mile 21, I can feel it and I fall apart. I learned the lesson of it's not just how you feel, but remember that you're churning through fuel possibly too quickly. I fell apart, I ran out of fuel, I went from five minute miles leading the Dublin Marathon to 540, to six minutes, to 610. It was an awful experience, but it was a massive one in terms of learning, respect the marathon, Respect, you only have enough fuel if you run at the right effort. Get the effort right, don't let the crowd get to you, and run a disciplined race. Let's talk about marathon number three. Marathon number three, a personal best, I should be absolutely delighted, but I went the wrong way on the course. I just caught the chase pack, I'd went past the chase pack, and I'm running and I'm going really well, and I see this marquee and it just, I just thought I was supposed to go right and I wasn't. I go right, I swing around the corner, nobody tells me not to. I must run for 200 meters in the wrong direction until somebody literally jumps in front of me and says, buddy, you gotta go back. Super frustrating, it really stressed me out and it started to overwhelm me a little bit, but I got myself back to a calm state, took a deep breath, back on the course, back going in a good direction. The second thing that I learned that day is you don't always get the result you deserve in terms of your fitness. My body was in a really good place in terms of fitness, but the problem was my body in terms of physical wasn't in a really good place. And both my hamstrings got to the point where they were cramping. They got so, so tight that I wasn't even able to push. And then when I was able to push, I had to manage this, please don't cramp up hamstrings with get the job done, get to the finish line. Marathon number four, you absolutely must train specifically for the demands of the course that you're gonna race. Boston Marathon, I'm stood on the start line. It literally starts on a downhill. 
and I don't remember a single downhill in my training build-up. I didn't even know what to do. I trained in Belfast, it was super flat. I did train hard, but I didn't train for the demands of the course. I did not train for the demands of the race. Around about mile 15, mile 16, my hamstrings, my quads, everything is falling apart. And I mean falling apart and quickly. I struggled to the finish line, but I learned a big lesson that day. You absolutely must train for the demands of your marathon. Look up the course, figure out, is it hilly? Is it gonna be hot? Train specifically for the marathon that you're gonna run. Let's talk about marathon number five. Marathon number five, Houston Marathon 2020, 211 52. Incredible result, absolutely incredible. Freezing, freezing cold. <laughs> Never really ran in the freezing cold. Didn't realize that when I get to the drink stations, my hands are gonna be so cold that I can't pick up the bottles. I got to the drink station, I'm trying to scoop up the bottles, they're falling on the floor. Brilliant day, brilliant result, big personal best, but I had this plan in place for 12 weeks that I wasn't gonna push, that I was gonna be sensible and I was gonna let the fitness come to me. I overtrained. On race day, I was tired. From the gun, I was tired. Put a good plan in place, stick to your plan, and don't overtrain. Otherwise, on race day, you will end up very tired and perhaps not getting the big result that perhaps you are capable of. Get a good plan, stick to the plan, and don't overtrain. Don't overpush, don't get greedy, even when you start to get really fit. Save that for race day. London, 2020. 209.48 and that is so fun to say. A couple of lessons that day. One was that I ran a half marathon with three weeks to go and it went really really well but almost too well. It put my body in debt and I had to recover and my quads were sore, my calves were sore and the final three weeks of preparation was super stressful. Very very stressful but at least I prioritized getting the body physically right and I didn't try to get greedy with training or I'd have ended up just being too tired for race day. I did lose some fitness because I reduced the training from 80, 90 miles a week to 40, 50 to get healthy. I lost a bit of fitness, but what I gained in the body being physically ready to go is what got me to the finish line. The second tip in there was sometimes you have to ignore the psychology. I was frustrated that I had lost some of that fitness and I didn't feel as good in the marathon as I had done in the half marathon. The half marathon felt easier and I ran 6108. Suddenly I'm running a marathon, I'm gonna go through halfway and 64 minutes plus, and I feel worse. I made a decision psychologically to ignore what the psychology is saying and focus on facts. If I run the next mile in five minutes, I'm okay. Don't worry about the head. Five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, get through the next mile. Sometimes in a race, you might have to start going mile by mile. Mile 12 to mile 20 felt awful, get through the next mile. From mile 20 onwards, I felt great. <laughs> so it just shows you that sometimes you just have to hustle and grind a bit through some of those miles, get yourself through the next mile. You have no idea what's waiting for you around the corner. You might start to feel better. Tokyo Olympics. It was supposed to be this great occasion, this amazing event that you go to and you're so proud of yourself, your family's so proud of you, your country's so proud of you, go there and kick ass. I went there in a terrible place psychologically. I kind of knew I was in a bad place psychologically, but I didn't know the extent of it. Once the race started to get tough, I didn't have what it takes. Didn't have the fitness, but also didn't have the psychology. You must look after your psychology. This world is really difficult. Sport can be really difficult, but start to look after that psychology. It's so important. Please start to look after that psychology. I wasn't kind to myself during that period, and I certainly wasn't kind to myself in that race, but I was fed up beating myself up internally. I was fed up with a, you're not good enough. We're not doing this. Let's give up. We shouldn't be here. And so I dropped out. I DNF'd. I let the country down, I let myself down, etc. 
but I was just tired of that internal abuse. So I got some help. Don't beat yourself up. Life's really tough. Running can be really tough, but work on your psychology in the buildup. Be kind to yourself and be better prepared for that next big day. So when it does get tough, you're ready, you've practiced. Look after your psychology, meditate, journal, yoga, start doing things to be kind to yourself. Write down things you're grateful for. It's super important. If you need more help with your psychology, I have a running school, joggingroom.com. So many tips in there on how to get that psychology into a good place, how to stop beating yourself up, and how to be nicer to yourself. London, I came back a year later. I had ran 217.55 in 2017. I came back in 2018. It was super hot. It was a bit overwhelming. It was record high temperatures. But what I really learned that day was I, I got too intense. In 2017, I loved it. In 2018, the crowd, the bands, everything was annoying me. It wasn't, it wasn't fun. And I let the whole situation just overwhelm me. I got too intense, too serious. And then your body tenses up and you don't feel good. The difference between that athlete in 2017 with no expectations, loved it, loved every minute of it, cheering the crowd on, let's go. To then all of a sudden in 2018, you're this super serious, super intense. And sure, I got a good race result, but running isn't just about fast times. It's about enjoying the experience. I didn't enjoy that experience. Try not to take it so serious. On the start line, take a, a big deep breath. Promise yourself that you're gonna enjoy the experience no matter what happens. It's only running. That is the biggest and best tip I can give you. Try to bloody enjoy it. You work hard enough, you deserve it. Try to enjoy it. That's all the advice I have for you today. All the experience I've got in terms of what I learned from those different marathons. If you want more running advice, you can go to my website, joggingroom.com. There's 10K plan, half marathon plan, marathon plan, heaps of tips, tutorials, strength tips, activation routines, recovery stuff you can do at home. There's also a master class with 60 lectures, 12 hours of tips, all things recovery, psychology, nutrition, strength conditioning, and all about your running, how you could plan your year better, and perhaps get the best out of your running. You can check that out, there's heaps of free stuff. But guys, happy running. Go a bit easy on yourself, run is tough enough, give yourself a pat on the back, give yourself a hug, tell yourself you're proud of yourself. Like, subscribe, do all those fancy things, and take care.